this is a video on how to make a nice dry bed uh, I'm going cheap on this one so I'm using patio blocks this is one I completed last year I had the uh, previous owner of my house left a bunch of patio blocks so I just decided to reuse them as the bordering and then I put some mulch in there and stuff like that but it looks pretty nice we gotta get rid of this bush here uh, every year I'm trying to improve the landscaping here but I thought that would grow back but it didn't so yep I'm gonna show you how to do one of these okay the first thing you want to do is you want to weed out wherever you're gonna put this dry bed As you see I got this grass this is an old lattice that I actually painted quickly spray painted with white paint to give it that a little bit of vintage look on it but uh basically made a box did some bordering here and i'm gonna put the bed there i started laying down stones so i want to show you that next but you have to weed it uh i find a useful tool to use it's this thing called the garden claw which they also make generic ones but i had this from my old house when i did a garden over there so it comes in handy basically what you do is you stick it above some weeds for example these little ones you really stick it in there and then you need two hands and you rotate it and it pulls up the weed and cultivates the soil to make it easier to work with continuing with my el cheapo methods i'm using patio blocks once again i uh, ran out of the old ones that my uh the previous homeowner had so I went and bought these at Lowe's for 53 cents a brick. They're just basically regular concrete patio blocks. But they do work, you know, for me at least. They have uh, more intricate designs if you want to, but they're going to charge you a little bit more. And I need to go with what I already had with the other beds to make it look kind of uniform. So I went with patio blocks. Basically what I'm doing right now is I'm using that shovel to dig a trench. I don't know if you can see that hole about one third up brick you could do up to one half if you need to i just need enough room to put the mulch on this side after so you want a wall over here that the mulch will rest against at least one to two inches preferably two and right now i'm just trying to make sure it goes in a somewhat straight line and i'm putting up where the bricks go before i do anything else so that way i can see where the border of my uh dry bed will be so i'm going to continue that and I'm gonna get back to you as soon as I'm done with the bricks. Okay, just got done with uh, laying out where my stones are gonna go. It's pretty even. It's a little uneven at points. But again, I'm not a perfectionist at this. Uh, if you're a perfectionist, you might wanna level the ground. Uh, one thing I did do is I leveled the bird bath so that way the water stays flat. Uh, the original homeowners, I don't know if it settled over time or they just didn't care, but it started tilting to the side so water would be coming out and uh i might do something with the bird bath maybe like a floatable fountain or something for the summer maybe put some little led lights on the bottom or something i'll figure that out i don't know so but pretty much you frame it out with the stones that you use and basically the next step and i have to uh plan this myself because i'm kind of doing this as i uh complete the project but i uh have to plan out where the plants go Okay, so I have to call it a day here because we don't have all the plants I need, but I did put in my solar lights. I actually got these at Harbor Freight. I've had my other set for like a year and they've lasted really, really well. So uh, I only lost one light, which still kind of worked, but it wouldn't turn on and off with the uh, nighttime. It would turn on and flicker off. So, but I bought more because the majority uh, of them work great. And the cool thing about the solar panel is it doesn't cloud over like uh, those cheap plastic covers. So I'll have to continue this tomorrow, get more plants, and I'll show you how to do the underlay. Okay, uh, getting back to uh, how to make a bed, dry bed that is. Um, so I picked my plants out. I planted one, because I wanted to show you that you can plant them already and then put the underlayment on, which is the next step. Or you could just, plan them out with just leaving them in the pots where you're going to put them put the underlayment on and then um put the you know plants in after and then mulch it after 
So I'm going to show you both ways. So it's really easy. Pretty much you just get your roll of underlayment, which is this stuff right here. They sell uh, different types. This is supposed to last like 25 years, they said. And honestly, it's been doing a great job in the front. I bought a large roll. It cost about, I want to say 50 to $70, something like that. But it was a huge roll. I've used a lot of it since. And it's, uh, it's the second year I've had it, and I still have that much left. I mean, it's cheaper in the long run to buy a big uh, roll of it if you're going to use a lot. I still have the backyard to do another bed in. So the next step is to take these stones that you've already laid out. You're going to take them out very carefully. So you don't want to forget where you put them to make a nice box around your dry bed. And then we're going to lay the underlayment under, it's going to start underneath the patio blocks, the blocks that you use, because you don't want weeds coming out from the sides. So you're going to make sure that you put the underlayment underneath where the stone would be. So that way it even blocks out weeds underneath the stones. Or else you're going to get weeds on the sides of your dry bed. And if you're going to do it once, you might as well do it the, the, right the first time. Now, uh, unlike what I planned earlier, I've had the bricks in for a couple days. And you can see that it kind of helps you out, especially if it rains. It's going to roast the dirt around it slightly so that you can see your trench and where all your party, patio blocks go after you're done uh, putting on the underlayment. It also shows you exactly how far you have to put the underlayment on. And the other thing I forgot that I almost forgot to tell you is that you want to level the soil somewhat so it's flat. And to do that, I took a broom with the patio blocks up and I just swept it back and forth till it was uh, nice and somewhat even. I mean, I'm not picky. Again, if you're a perfectionist, you can get a level out, see if it's level, but uh, I'm just not into that right now, so. All right, so as you can see, I got it underneath the part of patio blocks there. If you have a little extra, don't worry. You can trim it later with some scissors. You just really wanna make sure it's under the patio blocks. I have it taut, uh, you know, it's a little loose still, but I have it as taut as I can against the ground. And then I already, kind of held it down the patio blocks on this side uh, again we're gonna cut this off the roll as close to the patio blocks as we can so it doesn't show outside of the dry bed and just to let you know you're gonna use landscape pins which are these little metal things really really small they have two prongs on them and you're just gonna stick them in the ground near the patio blocks and that will secure your fabric to the ground now this is probably going to take a couple of along the edge but I'm going to put the patio blocks down first in front have them all lined up ready to go and I'll put the landscape pins down and then we're just going to cut the fabric from the roll as close to the patio blocks as possible and that will be the beginnings of our dry bed okay the front secure with landscape pins it's little metal things right there we got half this bed done, almost. Pull up the patio block from this side. Still see the indentation, which is awesome. And I have two problems now. One, I have this new plant. Honestly, I'm not worried about that. I'm still gonna just line up the edge of the new underlayment right against the plant. No, handle it after. But the main problem is gonna be this trellis right here. Which I fixed and still has rotted wood, but you know, it is holding up, has some metal, metal reinforcement. So I have this problem with this trellis right here, and I gotta get the uh, cloth around that. So I'm just gonna put it up to the trellis, and then I'll tell you what we're gonna do to get around the trellis. All right, start laying down the under limit on the other side. I already have it pinned down there, there, and in the corner. And I want to show you something. This is how you get around existing plants. You gotta leave a little space for water, but you pin it right near there and you overlap one landscape fabric with the other. And then we're just gonna work our way around and put another pin over here. The only problem is I have to cut the roll here so I can show you how to get around the trellis, which is right there, right near the roll. So we'll do that next. But I am gonna pin it on the other side of the plant so that way it blocks any weeds near the edges so again late here but i just want to show you that when you cut the roll off go around something you want to leave slack and all we're going to do is we're going to cut a hole 
in the middle of this to go around the trellis, basically. And that way you can fit around the trellis. And then we're gonna take the under limb and go from the other side, have it go the rest of the distance, overlap with this, and cut a slit in the middle, uh, middle of that one, which is the next one, so that it goes around the trellis. So again, it's getting late here, so I'm probably gonna have to turn in after this for the bag. But uh, just to show you, you lay Lannis ape fabric down, you put a big slit in the middle of it, and you work it around the trellis. Now there is gonna be dirt in the middle of the trellis, but honestly with the mulch, that I probably take care of by itself. Just make sure you get mulch in there. And I also gotta lock this side down still, so I gotta put another landscape pin. And then, I just have to go around the edges, make sure I have landscape pins all around. And that way it's locked in place. And then we're good to go. The next step would be planting plants, which are the rest of the plants that aren't planted. But you saw how to do it if you have them planted already, or if you have an obstacle. And then I want to show you how to just plant them with this landscape fabric. If there's any excess fabric hanging over the edge, I actually uh, got sick and tired using scissors, and I use a box cutter. And I just go along the ground, right with the bricks, and it comes right off. So uh, just do that to take off the extra stuff. All right, this should be the last part of our video. Uh, I'm gonna put the plants in before I put the mulch in. Uh, bed looks good. It'll straighten out as we put the mulch in. So if you have a couple cobblestones just a little bit off, don't go nuts. And the first thing you wanna do, if you wanna make an X, wherever you plan to plant a plant. And as you know from the other day, I told you to put the plants where you think they should be. Plant it out before you start cutting holes in your underlayment. We make it an X. And the next thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna take those uh, landscape pins and we're just gonna fold it back. And we're gonna pin them down with the landscape pins. So I will do that and I'll get right back. So as you can see, I tied back the underlayment with landscape pins. And you want to, they say dig twice, as, twice the width of the pot, but honestly, I'm just gonna dig in that hole enough to uh, go up to the surface of the plant it's the root ball that's what they call it the root ball so i'm gonna do that one other note you also want to put the uh soil that you take out somewhere because you might want to put it back after uh you won't use all of it obviously but have some place to put it i use um the old planters and then honestly i just throw it into the the brush if i have too much so okay i dug the hole out now you obviously got some soil on the underlayment i mean you know, it's not gonna kill anything. You gotta cover it mulch anyways, but try not to get dirt if you can help it on the underlayment. So it'll just maybe help some weeds that sprout themselves in there. So to test it, you put the pot in there and just make sure that the soil level is gonna line up with the soil level there at least. So our next step is to get some garden soil. Uh, I use miracle Grow garden soil. Honestly, you just get something that has a little fertilizer in it for uh, garden plants. And we're going to put some in the bottom of the hole. Okay, so there's my miracle Grow garden soil. I'm going to put some in the bottom of the hole. They say that you should use gloves when you when uh, putting stuff in. Honestly, you know, it's probably got chicken manure or something in it. But I'm not going to go nuts. So I'll use a shovel. Just going to shovel some out. And you're going to spread it around in the hole that you've dug. So that way... You have some fertilizer down there for the plant. So, stuff on the bottom, you wanna mix it up a little bit with the soil. And then, we're gonna take our plant, and we're gonna take off the uh, pot, the plastic pot, to turn it over. You can bang on the edge a little bit, and it should come right out with the uh, whole root ball in there. So I'm gonna do that next, then I'm gonna put it in the hole. Putting the root ball in the hole, you got some space around it. But you also wanna know what's the best part of the plant to go forward. Uh, this has the most flowers, I think, so that's why I make sure I put it in the right place before I start filling up the hole. Uh, we're gonna put a little soil on the side, a little garden soil on the side. Then we're gonna take some of our old soil and we're gonna put it back in the hole. And then we're gonna top it off with a little garden soil. And then we're gonna go back to a little bit of our old soil and finish it up on top. Okay, once you get the soil to the top, just gonna take out your landscape pins and put the underlayment X down towards the plant. 
And that plant is done. You will want to water it as soon as you get done with everything. So they have to establish the roots. So I'm going to do the other plants. And then the last thing we have to do is just lay some mulch down. And we should be all set. All right, I got my bag of mulch. Basically, all you're going to do is just get all your bags of mulch. I have more bags than this. Just put it in there. Try to put it underneath the plants, not on top of the plants. And I like to get a broom after I put a bunch of mulch down. And you're going to even it out with the sides. You're going to check to make sure that your bricks are aligned the way they're supposed to because the uh, mulch is going to push up against the wall. And that's what's going to retain it. So, uh, if you're wondering what the rocks are, I need the bird fountain, the uh, bird bath, I mean, uh, just to level it out. So I took a, basically a uh, leveler and I made sure it was level so that the water stays level. And yeah, so I'm just going to put all the mulch in and the last thing you'll see is just the final result. Uh, like I said, multiple bags of mulch. You want about one and a half to two inches. So we got that on our boards. That's why you did the borders first. And we'll see the final result. Now, as you get closer to the end, you might have to use your hand, push the mulch into corners and stuff in tight spaces. But as you can see, it's going in pretty easy. Remember, I want to get in between the uh, little lattice thing here. Get some mulch in there so that way no weeds grow from the middle. And I'm almost done, honestly. I mean, I got to spray it out, make sure it's level. Uh, my broom broke, so just to let you know that you can use a rake. However, it's pretty big, so if you have a swollen one, it might help you to get in smaller spaces. But you can use a rake to uh, level the mulch. Okay, uh, final video. We got the mulch in. Uh, gotta check it tomorrow because it's getting late here to make sure that I have it uh, level more. But uh, the other thing that you might want to do, seeing that we're at the end of our video, is you see along the outside edge of the box, if you want to level those more, which is what I'll do probably when I get more time, uh, you put a little dirt on the outside and it reinforces it from the outside and the mulch reinforces it from the inside. But I got some solar lights there. Double check to point them. Probably come out a little bit later when it's really dark and make sure they look good. But that, that's how you do a flower bed, which some people call a dry bed. So uh, I hope this helped.